So uh, for 3.6, example number one, um, we're given this formula. So, so here, every year that I teach this, sometimes my students kind of, they have a tendency to make it harder than what it really is because um, there's different formulas. So you can compound continuously, you can compound annually, you can compound uh, quarterly, semi-annually, and, there, and, and every formula is very similar. Um, and so you just have to read uh, in your textbook which is which. So for example, this is uh, compounded annually, not continuously, annually. That's once per year. That's what that means. Whoops. Okay. That's what that means. And so this is the formula. And so let me let me show you another formula that we're going to use. Um, this is how we determine the amount of money we have if we start off with a certain amount of principal and we compound it so many times a year. So it's compounded k times a year. So quarterly would be four times a year, so k would be quarterly. If it's done monthly, that's 12 times a year. So k would be 12. And then lastly, this one is compounded continuously. Okay, so in your textbook, if you turn to page uh, for your homework, page 341, each little section will, see, will say compounded monthly, compounded quarterly, compounded continuously, compounded annually. And you just have to choose which one of these formulas you're going to use. That's it. Truthfully, the red and blue formula would be the same. Uh, for example, if I were to say... If I were to use the red formula, and, and I did annually, how many times a year is annually? Once. One. So K would equal one. And if you plugged in one for K, you'd get the blue formula, right? So really, the only two that you need to memorize is the red and the green one. Does that make sense? Well, let's explain what all these things mean. Uh, in this textbook, A is the final amount, right? P is the principal, that's the amount of money you start off with. Principal. Can't remember if you spoke principal that way or the other way. That's right. Is that right? Yeah. Mr. Adams has been writing a lot of papers about school and education, and when you talk about principals, that's AL, right? Um, so now R stands for rate, right? So, but it's a little R. K is K times a year. T is time. Did I, did I mention all the variables? And E is the letter E. So the principal is how much you start with. The final amount is the amount. Final. And the rate is uh, usually a percentage, but it's written as a decimal. Okay. So now that we know that, you guys have all three of these formulas written on the on your paper, because we're going to do all these examples real quick. So for example number one, um, we're given it says, Quan invest five hundred dollars at a percentage rate of 7% that's compounded annually. Um, find 
find how much you have. It says find how much her investment will be worth after 10 years. So it says suppose Quan invests five hundred dollars at a seven percent interest comp uh, at seven percent interest compounded annually. Find the value of her investment ten years later. So now this would be which formula? The first one, the second one, or the third? The first one. So I'm going to say A equals P one plus the rate raised to the n, where n was the number of years, right? So this is n. This is 0 0.07, which is the rate, and this is the principal amount, and they're asking us what is the final amount. Now, some notation will use P naught and P, so sometimes you'll see it written like this. Some textbooks, but they mean the same thing, right? You guys should know that from your physics, right? Subset notation. P naught is the initial amount, just like V naught is your initial velocity. Does that make sense to you guys? Or sometimes you, you, you might even see it like this. So if you go, if you look on the internet, you might even see it like this. All means the same thing. So I'm looking for A, and A is equal to 500 times the quantity. 1 plus the rate, which is 0 0.07, raised to the 10. Does that make sense? So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug that in my calculator. Okay? So I'm going to say 500 times the quantity 1 plus 0 0.07 raised to the 10. And it's nine hundred and eighty-three dollars and seventy or uh, fifty-six cents or fifty-eight cents, right? When you round it, does that make sense to you guys? Okay. So A then is nine eighty-three fifty-eight. That's it. That's all she wrote. Any questions? <coughs>